question I get all the time is, are hard chambers the same as soft chambers? Can we get the exact same results using a hard chamber or a soft chamber? Do I need a hard chamber for certain conditions? Do I need a soft chamber? There are certain things that soft chambers can do that hard chambers can't. There's a huge misunderstanding between the different types of hyperbaric chambers that exist and ultimately what we could hope to accomplish using the different chambers for different health-related concerns or, or health-related goals. Dr. Jason Saunders with HBOT USA. And today we're gonna to be talking about the different types of chambers. Some chambers are gonna be pressurized with air. Some chambers are gonna be pressurized with oxygen, 100% oxygen. So that's a huge difference between pieces of equipment. And then some are made out of a, a hard material, either an acrylic or a steel, while others are made out of a soft material. What are the differences? What are their capabilities? And ultimately, what can we expect to get from using these different pieces of equipment in helping either ourselves, our families, or our patients when applying hyperbaric for whatever health goal we're trying to achieve. So let's understand a few things. Number one, hyperbaric, hyper-increased baric pressure. So in all circumstances with regard to hyperbaric chambers, there needs to be a way of creating an increased amount of pressure. That pressure is gonna come from a gas. That gas is typically either gonna be air, which is 21% oxygen, or it could be pressurized with 100% oxygen. What are some of those differences? Number one, if you're pressurizing with air and you're not supplying an enriched oxygen source, then the gas that the chamber is being filled with is 21% oxygen and at pressure will still drive more oxygen into circulation. Hyperbaric works primarily because of pressure. Please see some of the earlier videos if you have any questions about that. And so, if you have this chamber, it's filled with 21% with oxygen, and that's driving oxygen absorption into circulation. And the amount of oxygen that you'll absorb is really based on the amount of pressure increase above whatever normal atmospheric pressure happens to be for you. As you start to increase the percentages of oxygen that you're breathing while under pressure, that graph really becomes exponential in terms of how much oxygen is being absorbed. So pressure is what makes it possible. And then the percentage of oxygen is ultimately what compounds that and makes it even more effective. Soft chambers are always air filled. So there is no version of a soft chamber out there, legally at least, that we know of, that is pressurized with 100% oxygen. So soft chambers are always pressurized with air. Hard chambers, again, either usually an acrylic or a steel based material, those could be pressurized with air or pressurized with 100% oxygen. If you're pressurized with 100% oxygen, while you lie there, you're literally just breathing in the air, the oxygen, the gas that the chamber was pressurized with. And so the breathing system is the oxygen itself that's pressurizing the chamber. And then carbon dioxide could build up in that chamber. And so there's typically some type of CO2 scrubber a device that will help el eliminate some of the carbon dioxide buildup inside the chamber, keeping the carbon dioxide levels much lower. In an air-filled chamber, typically that's gonna be pressurized with air, and then the patient's either gonna be wearing a mask or a hood. And in one of those two scenarios, that's the oxygen delivery source. And so the oxygen is being fed through some external source, like a mask or a hood. That person's now breathing enriched oxygen. That could be potentially from a concentrator and that could range anywhere from like the high 80s to the low 90s in percentage of oxygen, or it could be coming from a 100% oxygen source. And as that patient's breathing in the oxygen while under the pressure, it's going to have either a very similar, if not the exact same effect as the patient being inside the 100% oxygen environment. There's a misconception that being inside the 100% oxygen environment is uh, more advantageous because of the amount of oxygen that's gonna be absorbed through the skin. That is absolutely not true. There is zero oxygen absorbed through the skin. All of the benefit of hyperbaric comes from respiration. You have to actually breathe the air, breathe the oxygen into your system. We heal when we're healing and using oxygen for healing purposes. We heal from the inside out, not from the outside in. 
So the exposure of oxygen to the outside of our body makes zero difference in terms of the effectiveness of the therapy. It's all about what you're breathing. Even in hospitals where they're doing wound care and they're using multi-place chambers where many people, five, six, 10, 12, 15 people all go into the chamber together, in those scenarios, those are always air-filled chambers with oxygen supplied externally. It would be way too expensive and dangerous, honestly, to fill an entire room with 100% oxygen. So those multi-place chambers are always air-filled with an oxygen supply. If you like the content that we're putting out on this channel, please hit the like button. That's gonna help other people find videos like this to make sure that we're answering everybody's questions and hopefully getting the right information in the right hands so that people can make the best decisions for their health. If you really like the information, hit the subscribe button to make sure that you're getting updates on all the new videos that we're putting out every week. When it comes to the application of hyperbarics, what can hard chambers do that soft chambers can't or vice versa? The reality of this conversation really comes down to the truth being we don't know. There has not been anywhere near as much research in soft chambers as there has been in hard chambers, meaning we have a lot more research on higher ranges of pressure than we do on lower ranges of pressure. Although the research in the lower ranges is building and we're learning more every year. And so at this point, what we can say is hard chambers have been historically used for 14 approved, FDA approved indications. And those 14 indications are primarily life-threatening or limb-threatening conditions. Things like gangrene, osteonecrosis, osteomyelitis, significant radiation burns or thermal burns, where a tremendous amount of healing needs to take place, or this person may die, or we may need to amputate a limb. When you really dive into the mechanisms of hyperbaric, which we also covered in an earlier video, the reasons that hyperbaric work for all of these 14 approved indications they're really the same mechanisms that we would apply to what's considered to be off-label use or the 100 plus internationally recognized indications that hyperbaric could be used for. And what we're doing is we're understanding the mechanisms of action and we're applying them to other issues, other health concerns, or even performance goals in terms of how could we use oxygen to improve the rate of recovery, to improve the rate of healing, and to improve the rate of regeneration of our cells and our tissues. In this moment, as I make this video, like I said, there is a lot more research in the higher end of pressure than the lower end of pressure. That being said, we have had some studies coming out on the lower end of pressure with regard to things like mold toxicity or uh, autism spectrum or performance related uh, healing and recovery. And so, you know, the research there is building. And recently there are some studies coming out on lower end of pressure with regard to stem cells. And we will have a study coming out by the end of the year, hopefully, or early next year on lower end of pressure and its effect on stem cells and telomeres and regeneration, healing, inflammation. We're really looking cognition. We're really looking at a broad spectrum of benefits of what does the 1.3, which is what a soft chamber is, 1.3 atmospheres, compared to two atmospheres, that higher range of pressure. How do they compare which changes happen from which types of equipment at what periods of time. And so we're really trying to build this awareness because we're trying to help propel the field in a positive and forward direction. And so hopefully by the end of the year, we'll even know more about these comparisons between lower end of pressure and higher ranges of pressure. Another difference between these two chambers is the complexity of design and operations. Hard chambers really need to be run by technicians. And those technicians should be trained and certified technicians so that they could really help, number one, understand the complexity of hyperbaric. Number two, how to safely get people to pressure. And number three, what to really watch for as you get to higher pressures of oxygen is really when a lot of the concerns for things like oxygen toxicity could really start to take place. And so we want to make sure that patients being treated at higher pressures are absolutely being monitored throughout the time of their treatment and that the person monitoring them has the capacity to also mitigate any risks and issues that could come up during the treatment. And so hard chambers are absolutely more complex. Hard chambers, uh, because they go to higher pressures, are likely capable of helping to heal and regenerate and reduce inflammation faster than what, let's say, a typical soft chamber might be able to, to do. Does that mean a soft chamber can't do that? Not necessarily. Hyperbaric means increased pressure, right? And in all cases, we are increasing the pressure of oxygen to some degree. And as a result, patients are absorbing some increased amount 
of oxygen, which is going to stimulate very similar pathways. Do we have as much research in the soft chambers as we have in the hard? No. Do we have a lot of clinical experience across the board with people using soft chambers and still having some great results? Absolutely. And is the research in soft chambers building literally month after month, year after year? Definitely, that is that is happening. It's happening as we speak. And the more we learn, the more we're starting to understand the continuum of where the benefits of soft chambers begin and end and where the benefits and risks ultimately of both soft and hard chambers begin and the risks and benefits end. And so we hope to have even more of this information over the next year or so. So in summary, again, there's different types of equipment. Some equipment is pressurized with air and some equipment is pressurized with oxygen. There are definitely different risks associated with those environments. And so understanding the complexity of these types of chambers is really important for you. If as a patient or as a potential clinic wanting to implement hyperbaric in your practice, it's very important that you understand exactly what you're getting involved with. And two, there are soft chambers and there are hard chambers. And at this moment in time, we're using the same word hyperbaric to describe the entire spectrum of equipment. And that's created a lot of confusion in the field because people just assume any one of these pieces of equipment can do any one of the benefits that we talk about with hyperbaric. And that's not necessarily true. It's really important that you understand that there are definitely limitations, soft chambers, can only go to a certain pressure. That's 1.3 atmospheres in the US. Hard chambers can go from 1.3, you know, all the way to, you know, three atmospheres if for whatever reason there was a need. Are they comparing apples to apples? No. Can you still get great benefit out of both? Definitely. And so understanding this spectrum and understanding your health issues or your goals or your goals for your clinic and your patients, those are the kinds of questions that need to be answered to really decide which type of equipment is best for you. Should you get a home chamber and treat yourself and because it's more convenient and easy to do that at home? Or is whatever issue you have really required to be in a hard chamber and it's better that you go find yourself a clinic? Those are the kinds of things that we need to figure out. And ultimately, through the education process within hyperbarics and hopefully a lot of these videos, you know, we hope to be able to educate you so that you can make the best decision for yourself. Thanks a lot and I hope you found this helpful. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.